I mentioned in a previous video that I'd gotten myself a logic analyzer to help debug the uh, video board that I've been working on. So I thought I'd show you a little bit about what it's been uh, like to work with that. I've never used a logic analyzer before, so I'm barely scratching the surface of this thing, but it's already pretty interesting. So this is the logic analyzer here. Um, it is a tiny little USB device. Um, this one is made by Highlight Go. Um, it is an eight channel logic analyzer um, with a peak sampling rate of 24 megahertz. So a logic analyzer just basically is a device that can um, sample digital signals at um, a fairly high rate and I'll let you uh, ex explore what's going on so that you can see the relationship between different kinds of signals, measure timing properties and things like that. Eight channels is definitely on the low end. Lots of them would do a lot more channels than that. Um, and 24 megahertz isn't a really high sampling rate, but guys, this thing cost me 11 bucks. And so if it's uh, going to do the job, it's certainly going to be good enough for what I need, um, uh, even though it's uh, not necessarily a super um, high-end high -end device. Um, this one depends a lot on software. It doesn't have any buffering internally, so you need the um, USB device to be sucking all the data out straight away, and that's where, the, where it's all going to be stored. Um, some logic analyzers can um, interpret the digital signals they're reading as SPI signals or some other protocol and interpret them for you. Um, I can do that here in software, but it doesn't happen on the device itself. This is pretty uh, bare bones, but again, um, probably enough for what I'm going to do. So uh, let's take a look at using it. Okay, so the main window we're looking at here is the software I'm using to uh, operate the logic analyzer. And this is an open source package called uh, Sigrock Pulse View. Um, it uh, you know, is free for downloading and um, it supports a whole range of logic analyzers and related devices. Um, and um, one of uh, somebody who posted a comment on a previous video pointed out that Joel over at the Open Tech Lab channel is one of the developers of this software. So I'm very grateful to him and his colleagues. You should definitely go check out that channel, which has a lot more information about this thing than I'm going to be able to tell you since I'm really just learning what's going, learning what's going on. So let's just see about getting it set up here. So I have to tell this that I want to connect um, to the device. Um, okay, that's great. I'm going to zoom out a bunch um, just for the moment. And you can see here, these show me the eight channels of my uh, logic analyzer. So the way it's set up right now is I have these three top channels are actually tied to control lines. I think that's the, um, the, the, the register select line and then the um, read, write enable and read enable. I can't remember which way around those are. We'll see in a second. Um, and then D3 to D7, these are tied to D0 through D4, the lower five um, least significant bits of the data channel. Um, it's actually a little confusing with the TMS 9918A because uh, Texas Instruments likes to label um, um, D0 is the most significant bit rather than the least significant bit, which is not the way my mind thinks. Um, but, uh, but these are the, le the least significant bits of the, of the data channels there. Okay, so um, over here I have uh, my fourth and I've got a command set up to execute that's going to do a VRAM write and then a VRAM read. So let's do that. So what we'll do first is I will um, start, oh yeah, start this thing running. Um, then I'm going to execute my command and then I'll come back over and stop this. Okay, so that's all the data that we gathered and um, you see there's a bunch of things going on here. Um, now that's super zoomed out again, so let's zoom in and see what's happening in there. What's going on in that data. Um, Oops, yeah, that's not bad, that's not bad. So um, we sort of have six um, events here. Um, and so if you just look at the top, look along these control lines, we'll see there's one event, there's a second event, there's a third event, there's a fourth, there's a fifth, and there's a sixth. And the reason we have those six events is that the two operations I did, a VRAM write and then a VRAM read, both involve three data transfers each. Um, two transfers to set up an address from which we're going to read or write, 
and then one transfer that either writes a byte or it reads a byte. So if we look here, what we have, um, uh, the, the mode line is high, the write line is low, and so that means this is a place where we're going to, um, that's a signal to write a byte into uh, the register for the processor. And if we look down here at the data lines, we can see 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. That's the first byte that we're writing. Here's a second byte that we write. Um, we write it, we know we write it because the read line is high and the write line is low, and this is an act of low signaling. Um, and so here we have uh, um, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So those are the, uh, those are the, the lower, lower five bits of the two um, uh, bytes that we transfer in order to do the write. Here is where we actually do the write. So you see that the write line goes low once again to say I'm writing, but because the register select is low, that's how we signal that we're writing into VRAM and not into a register. And here's the data that gets written and it's 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And the reason is that I wrote, if you look over here, I wrote the hexadecimal pattern AA, which is an alternating 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 pattern of bits just for convenience. Okay, and then along here, something else happens. So at first, this looks very similar to over here. We have two data writes that are happening, and these are happening with the mode signal high, um, and so that means we're writing into the register. And we're doing the same thing again. We're writing in the address from which we want to read data. And we write in the same address that we did uh, last time because I'm trying to read back the same data that I, uh, that I uh, just wrote. And then similarly, we do a second one. And we're setting this up again to be the same as we, as we did before, um, the same address. And this is where we do the VRAM uh, read. So let's just zoom in a little more because we can see some other interesting things happening here. Because um, you might ask yourself, why does everything go high first? This is where the read happens because there's the read signal, but everything goes high first. Um, and I think the reason for that is that um, in order to um, do the read, I have to put the 6522 port into read mode. So you either you have to set the direction of each bit in the um, the 6522, and so I have to like instead of saying using it for output, I'm going to use it for input. And as soon as I set it to input, everything goes goes high. <clears throat> that at least is my interpretation of what's going on. Um, and th but then here we actually do the um, why is this happening? There we go. Here we're actually doing the 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 read. So we set the read signal to low, and that says we want to read that address that we just told you, just set up in the previous two reads. And then here are the values that we get back. And so there's zero, one, zero, zero, and one. Now. I said I wrote in an alternating pattern of bits, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So we're not getting back the data that we wrote in. That seems pretty suspicious. But there's actually something more suspicious, which is that what we get back is actually the same data that we wrote in um, as one of the um, address lines over here. Um, and so I seem to always get back <clears throat> one of the bytes of the address lines that I wrote in, uh, that I um, um, set up before. So that seems like more than a coincidence. It's certainly not right, but um, the fact that it's going wrong, but going wrong in that very specific way, seems to me to signal, it's a, it's a clue. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to interpret the clue yet. Right now, what I think is my signaling is okay. These seem to be doing the right thing. It's sending data in. It's getting data out. It's doing it, and you know, it's not um, it's not too slow. It's not too fast. It seems to be doing the right thing. The fact that I'm getting the wrong data back, I think that means that there's a problem on the video board itself, not with my interface. Okay, so that's good. I've managed to narrow something down. It might be a timing problem. Um, it might be a wiring problem. 
I don't know that yet. I'm going to have to sort of poke around a lot more um, and um, and go through the, the circuit that I'm using in more detail, particularly on some, some of the, the timing questions. Um, but the, using the signal analyzer, the logic analyzer, at least has convinced me in the first instance that my signaling is okay. So it's a very small step forward, but it's still a step forward and I'm going to take it.